The title of my poem is The Women's Dilemma. Am I just some material? Or am I supposed to be that perfect girlfriend or wife to you? Why am I bounded by all these chains? Non-existential chains. Why am I more judged? Well, you keep asking me all sorts of questions. But am I supposed to get the answers at all? Don't talk to me about society. Society is just the figment of our creation. It is you who is trapped in the mentality of hate, of discriminating, of being biased, and of being dominating. By law, we are all equal. But however, by this corrupt system, we are labeled and we are broadly categorized. That's reality, and that's just what is said. The things I do like, breastfeeding in public, wearing the dresses I feel comfortable with, coming home late, going for parties, and going out for further studies, gives your demons out. Remember, we came out naked, and naked shall we go. A humble request to all those saints to kindly change their perspective, if not stop burdening themselves more. For we are all but a product of their sins, hence imperfections are meant to be. The cases of crimes, violence, and dastardly acts against the women are rising. Teasing of women on roads, sexual harassment of women in the workplace, rapes, and even murder after rapes. Where are we heading? Safety is just a deceit, and law and order is just a sham. Anarchy is what is prevailing. Am I not entitled to my citizenship? Am I? Am I not allowed in my father's property share? Or am I not to have my own identity? And it is you who criticized me for demanding what is right and for demanding to, and for demanding to be treated fairly. You have made me. You are the reason. You have sown the seeds behind the demand for reservation. You have made me feel insecure. You have made me be the weaker sex. But I hold no grudge, nor no remorse. I am a proud girl. I am a woman with dignity. For I am who I am. For I will be whom I wish to be. Thank you. Girl intelligent, trophy daughters and rank holders, ah, labels and cliches. I, woman, she who birthed you, a woman, we loved when cosmos deceived. We were your first friends. We sheltered, we nurtured, we protected, we gave. We were constant. I wear my clothes, dresses descend to the nines on Sundays, yet I. She. I wear pens and drives a gypsy too. I, she. I cook. I run the house. I am the perfect daughter. Yet I, she. I cheat on my diet. I turn into a gag and laze around on Saturdays. Does this make I a girl careless? No. I, woman. What if I wear makeup? What if I paint my nails red? What if I wear mini skirts and flimsy tops? What if I drink, party? What if I have a boyfriend? What if I have tons of male friends? Does that mean I relish the abuses and teases? No. I, she, a woman. I am. I am. I was raised by a woman of faith and a dad who supports my every decisions. I was raised by my brothers who taught me to be strong and intellectual. 
intellectual with my thoughts. I was raised by my friends who thrives in the independent I seek and my strong character. I was raised by my aunts and uncles who never belittled my ambitions and aspirations. I was raised by my neighbors who respected my privacy yet treated me as their own. I was raised by a church who instilled in me a great sense of responsibility of always being good and kind. I was raised by a God who fulfilled all of my wishes and listened to all my woes. Listen, my mother did not raise a girl, neither did the Almighty God. So why treat me as a subject? Why treat me as a tool for your pleasure and fun? Why treat me as an inferior being? She, girl, weak. She, girl, weak. I, a woman. My resilience is not a weakness. I survived. I fought. She raises her voice. Though her throat aches and runs dry with rage, the pain endured too long, mouth shut prolonged, hands tied to no use, slammed across the floor, burnt, beaten, kicked, abused. like an armor. Those scars, those against the, that ridicule those marks. The marks of abuse, the marks that last left, the marks that almost took a life. Body shaming, drama enduring. Now's the time to stand up. Fight, shout, cry, scream if needed but never give in because the wounds left are unattended, ignored. Silenced and disregarded. Enough. Enough with pain. Enough with violence. Enough with silence. Enough with belittling. Enough with rape. Souls scarred. Society wicked. I, she, he, we, them. We are all humans. Treat me as how you want to be treated. With kindness with respect, with love, with dignity. All people living at the same time, none hold the weight of the world. Generations after generations, stressing on generating a generation equality. Opens Genesis, perhaps both given life at the same minute. Exo uh, sorry. Perhaps both given life at the same minute, equality exalts. We breathe the same air, equal is our grave, but we pay the price of your rib. I, she, a woman, I am, I am, Thank orange you. to her. Yes, being a man, I was taught to have my head held high. Today, I humbly bow my head down. In shame and regret. Oh, now I wonder how to call myself a man if I don't raise my voice now. I'm proud of my country. It's filled with diversity and many new thoughts. But alas, none of the changes come so far on this hideous and shameful crime called red. It's men who commit this crime, and men are the ones who always point the blame to the girl for what she was wearing. Dear brothers and fathers, is this how we are protecting our mothers, brothers, our mothers, sisters, and daughters? With those lustful gaze and our dirty thoughts, are, you, are we really fit to be called the protectors? Yes, you may be the shield of the women of your family. But are you brave enough to clear your thoughts and your lustful gaze from a stranger's daughter or mother? Ask yourself this. No, I refuse to live in a world where red news has just become a headline to keep the news running. And many cases are still pending in the courts. And if you are a man and if you are okay with that, then Hatome Churia Penlena. 
How many candle marches more should we do in order for this crime to stop? Yes, my brother and father laugh while the daughter or sister is crying for help and her mouth is being covered and those savages are tearing her up. But wait, don't you have a daughter or sister back at home whom you love and will protect from the rest of the world? Kodana kareki havas in havaski shetano ki nazar teri beti or beheno pe lage. In shetano ne tu ab mene ki bachi ko bhi nahi chora. Today, mothers are afraid not to, uh, afraid to have a girl child, not because of beti parao, beti pajao, but because of the fear of meri beti ko kwan bachega in havaski shetano se. There, there are many cases that didn't make it to the FIO books and women were suppressed due to the fear and the shame that they had to face from the society. One day I want to wake up in a world where our brothers and, father, uh, and bro fathers have all come together, not just to stand up, but have a talk, have a clear talk and I have a clear thought to create a safe future for our, for our future daughters and our sisters. Voice out, stand up now, so that when your daughter or sister go out from, your, from the house for school or work, she might be able to return home safe and protect a girl who is all alone. Help her to reach her safe home so that the stranger might do the same for you. Dear brothers and fathers, I'm not blaming all for this crime, but let's create a wall and a barrier so high and so strong that not even the, not the savages, but even the thoughts should be afraid to cross that wall because they have to go through all of us first. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My poem is called, Strong. From the moment I was born, my father called me, son. He robbed me from the very essence of being a daughter. As a child, I grew up receiving lessons on how to be a woman when I was still called son. I grew up and got my first job. Sure, my father was proud, but all of that pride was for the son and none for the daughter. But why? First day of my work, I'm excited. But I should have looked forward to something else, perhaps. They sit there in a group of two or three and call me names. I avoid just like I've been told and they start to play their games. They push me to the ground, they hold my collar and what happened next? Oh, let's not even bother. They tore my clothes. They touched my parts which I did not adore. I shouted, I screamed. I resisted. Should I say more? What should I call the day? My fate? Was it my destiny? Oh wait! Oops! It's my fault. I was scarred. I saw my world flash before my eyes and I was all alone. Some looked at me with sympathy, others with disgust, but all of them were gone. I stood at the front door of my home with the hope of getting love and comfort that none had shown. Oh, I still remember the horrid look on their faces, how my mother went pale, how my father lowered his gazes in shame and called me, oh, daughter. A walk 
walking temple in my home. My world confined to the four corners of my room. I realized that I had to stand up, I had to fight, but this only added a new chapter to my plight. I went to the doctor for examination. I had no knowledge that I'd be greeted by the questions. Was it late? What were you wearing? What were you thinking? You who? But nobody cared to ask how I feel. After being labeled a relentless whore at the police station, of course they did not say it out loud, I turned my gaze to justice. Oh, that mighty justice which I read about. Now life didn't give me a second chance, but justice sure gave them. Say, they were juveniles, or maybe it's just the never-ending trials. But be still, for I did not go empty-handed. I was given with the overnight fame, which gave me a spotlight in the headings of the newspapers that read It was astonishing to see how my country united with one night and hold postcards and demanded for the justice that perhaps I would never receive. Where was your unity when the ears were filled with my screams? Where was that unity when I did not have enough strength to spare? Do not come down, do not come now holding those postcards. Do not come now lighting the fire. Do not let the light of hypocrisy shine bright on your face just after you have made me the symbol of a disgrace. All this time I stood alone. I know I'm scarred, but I am strong. I am India's daughter and this is my story. Thank you. everyone, respected the panel of judges, my name is Sanjum Lila Longkumar and my poem is on being a woman. It's titled, I Write Anyway. As I write, thoughts rush in. Is this right? Afraid, I sin. I write anyway to women out there. Do not shy away. Voice out! What's unfair? She returned home alone that evening. Well, not so alone. In the streets where a man standing. And her attempts to escape. Oh, forlorn. Religion says a woman should walk under a man's shadow and he will give her the word. Women 
growing at man's pace. Someday I wish to feel this place is home, safe home. I'm right anyway. To women out there, you are capable, capable of so much. You are unbreakable. So go, take charge. I read anyway to women out there. We'll do much better. We'll build a sky together. There's a fire that grows within. Let the revolution begin. I read anyway to women out there. To those, to those who has broken their bondage. To you, to you, my sister. To you, I pay my homage. Thank you very much.